Hey there, Cam. So um, just wanted to ask you about this next challenge. Uh, you know, Clemson's got a, a pretty good offense, a really good defense. Uh, in terms of stopping, you know, their quarterback, they they have two really good running backs, a couple of really good receivers. You know, can you just talk about that challenge and how difficult it's going to be, um, you know, for you guys to really get after them? Um, of course, it's, you know, Kay Pupnik, Will, and, and um, number seven. It's going to really be hard, you know. Defense got to stand up, you know. We just got to um, make plays that, that come to us, continue to make routine plays, you know. We just can't give up explosives too much. Next, we'll go to Adam from the Sun Sentinel. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Cam. How's it going? Um, so it seems like, you know, a couple times in the last two weeks, um, you know, guys in the secondary have maybe like, you know, tried to make the big play and, you know, ju miss time jumps or bit a little bit on, on some passes and stuff. Uh, how do you guys work on, because obviously you want to make a big play. Everyone wants to, you know, pick off a pass and stuff and that's understandable. How do you kind of balance that with also just making sure you stay kind of steady in, in coverage? Um, it's kind of it's kind of hard to work on in practice because you know every in the game is is pretty different. It, just like you said, everybody's trying to make a play, so you got to just kind of be conscious of, of the scenario and what and what's going on. You know, there's not really too much to be said about it because it's like you don't want to take the aggression away from the the player, and then now they're just giving up stuff all game because they're not playing it like themselves anymore. So you got to just kind of like just tell them, you know, just kind of be more conscious of what you're doing. And then you know. Unfortunately, you guys have kind of been in this spot before, dropped a couple games, and now you're trying to break out of this little skid. Um, what have you learned from maybe from your past couple of seasons on how to handle being in a situation like this? Um, just to kind of just to take the good with the bad, honestly. You know, uh, just, you know, like I said, take the good with the bad. You know, take it from the game and just, you know, see what you did well and see what you did poorly and kind of move on. And just add it to your game and what to take out and to be ready for your next opponent. Uh, next, we'll go to Susan Miller Degnan. Susan, go ahead. Pam, what, what makes Kate Klubnik so dangerous as a quarterback? Um, he's elusive with his legs. You know, he kind of – he can scramble and extend plays very well. Um, I think he has pretty good accuracy, you know, and um, – he know when to when to get his receiver the ball and how to get into him in open space. Okay, and then my follow is uh, Elijah Arroyo is is going to be playing more. Mario said, um, and you know he's been out a long time after his injury. Uh, what you know, what, what does he bring to the team? Why is that important? And what kind of guy is he? What's he like? Um, he just he just brings more juice to that you know that, that tight end room. You know, with with, with Cam and, and Riley. You know, it's a little you know, he, he's, to me, you know, everybody coming into the season know he was going to be that guy at tight end. So just to have that guy back at tight end, you know, it's going to be real good. Is he excited? Of course he's excited, you know. Being out a long time, like you just said, of course. Why wouldn't he be excited for that? Has he talked about it with you guys? Um, Not too much, you know. Just kind of like, you know, trying to keep the excitement down and just kind of just getting, make sure he's grinding and making sure he know him plays and ready for the game, you know. You can't get too excited before then. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'll go to Marcus Benjamin. Marcus, go ahead. Hey, Cam. I uh, wanted to ask about just causing turnovers. Um, were there any moments in the UNC game where you kind of thought you could have caused a turnover? And has that been an emphasis in practice this week, causing turnovers? Um, me personally, I don't, I don't Watching the film and reviewing the film, there's not too many plays where I could have kind of caused a turnover. You know, for the most part, when I'm in the post, there wasn't really no shots or anything like that. Braun didn't come my way too many times, but when he did, I, I made a play and did what I had to do. Um, of course, that's that's I think that's the main key to our defense the whole time. You know, pretty good run team. I mean, run defense, pretty good pass defense. You know, we just got to make those plays to get our team off the field, you know, because you could kind of – get a pass flash and attack with somebody. But if you could get that fumble or you could get that pick and stuff like that, you know, we kind of get the, get the ball back to our offense hands. And that's one less play we got to be on the field. And that's one less opportunity to get this kind of try to score. And we'll wrap up by going back to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey again. So Coach Gidry was telling us yesterday about um, 
on the play where you had your sack that uh that James was kind of arguing, you know, bugging you, asking if he could blitz instead. Um, how much do the two of you guys uh, enjoy those play calls when you get a chance to just kind of shoot through the gaps? Love those, especially ones like that. You know, that one kind of designed for you to make the play. So that one, I see. You you could tell why he was trying to argue it because one of us was gonna make it, and we knew the play was gonna work to perfection. So. And when James is asking you to to take over that role instead, what did you tell him? Nah, this is me. <laughs> this is my this is my turn. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, two tough losses for you guys in a row. Um, you guys unfortunately have kind of been in this spot in the past. How what have you learned from maybe past uh tough stretches like this to kind of help the team get through, you know, these this kind of run? For sure. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, in the past we've just, you know, dealt with it and just, you know, it just carried over. Um, now our, our, all our main focuses is just on our self-inflicted wounds. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, offense top 10 and moving the ball and in the whole entire country, you know, um, and defense doing a really good job is just, you know, it's just, again, self-inflicted wounds, turning the ball over, um, penalties and stuff like that. We just got to focus on ourselves, ourselves, and um, I mean, Clemson has a great defense. Um, we're versing a really good team this week, so we just got to, you know, lock in and bring everything we have. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to Matt Shodell. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, hey Xavier. Um, so, you know, I'm sure you're aware of this, but uh, you know, you're on pace to easily break the uh, the school record for catches in a year with almost 100 at, at your current rate. Um, you know, so it's sort of a breakout year for you. Uh, you know, how do you sort of view that type of thing? You know, you haven't had the success before. How do you work on, I know you're a hard worker. How do you work on keep improving, keep getting better? Like what is there in your game that, that you can still get better at? And what are you working on right now? For sure. I mean, the first day I ever touched a football, it was always get better each and every single day, you know, so that's nothing new to me. Um, I mean, yes, the, you know, the ball is coming to me, but that de- honestly don't even really care about that. We just need to get back on this winning train and um, just continue um, improving ourselves um, off the field, on the field, and then we'll, we'll be good. <clears throat> Next, we'll go to Susan Miller Degnan. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Xavier. Um, how I know that Elijah is is going to be integrated into the offense more. Um, coach told us um, how can he, you know, Elijah being back in the lineup contribute. Um, to the passing offense and perhaps take some attention off the wideouts. Elijah's a great player. He's um he's a really hard worker. Just glad that he's going to be on the field with us. Um, what does he do? What does he do well specifically? And can you imagine being out for that long? Actually, you can. You were out for a while last year. You know. Uh yeah. Um, I mean, he's a great player all around. All around player. He could block, catch, run routes fast, um, has heart, hard worker. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll go back to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey again. So uh, just from watching film, uh, what have you seen from Clemson's defense? Obviously, they're, they're very talented. Yes, yes, a very talented team. Um, fast, they're athletic, big up front, um, really skilled on the back end. Um, they play good football. You know, um, I think that's what it comes down to. Um, not only are they good athletes, but they play really, really good football. So, again, we're just going to have to lock into ourselves. Um, you know, we trust Coach Dawson in the offense. And, yeah, we'll get the job done. <clears throat> and and just kind of, like, following up on that, like, their team, I mean, Miami hasn't beaten Clemson, I think, I remember right, since 2010. It's so obviously not in your tenure here. Does that build up, like, in guys who've been around for, been around here for a while, that kind of build up in the back of your mind, like I really want to get these guys. They've had our number the last few times we played them. Um, not necessarily. You know, every Saturday is any given Saturday, just like any given Sunday. Um, we just got to come to play, and you know, um, the best the best team that plays the best will win. Not necessarily the best team, but whoever plays the best on Saturday will win the game. Elijah, I, I know you played last week, I, I guess sparingly. Um, Coach Cristobal said you'll be playing more and you look as good as you did uh, before the injury. What was it like being back, you know, on the field after so long? Like, did you appreciate it more? What was it like physically and emotionally? Oh, yeah, it was 
you know, it was such a blessing, you know, just being on the field, just being able to be out there with my guys, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming. You know, I haven't been on the field in over a year. And, uh, you know, it, it just felt good to be back out there with my brothers. How are you doing, like, physically? Yeah, you weren't out there that many plays, but do you feel ready to play more of that, you know? Yeah, I feel good. Uh, I think the uh, coaching staff and the trainers, you know, they did a good job with me, you know, making sure I'm 100%, you know, before I'm ready to go back out there on the playing field. But, yeah, um, I, I feel good. And and then the other thing was the tight ends haven't had nearly as much production, obviously, as receivers this season. Um, how, how important – is it for uh, for your for your position to contribute to the passing game, not just in addition to blocking, but you know the actual passing game? Um, you know, honestly, what I like about our tight end group, you know, we're we're pretty selfless. You know, we'll do whatever it takes to win. We're we're not we're not worried about any stats or anything like that. Whether you know they want us to block, they want us on the perimeter, they want us catching balls. You know, we'll we'll all be ready to do any of that that they ask us. Okay, thanks. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Elijah. How's it going? Good. Um, so I just wanted to check first. Um, so the, I know we spoke to you, like, you know, during fall camp and you were working your way back. So, like, was this delay? Was it just, like, recuperation from the ACL or was it a, a new thing that you were kind of dealing with? Yeah, no, I, I had a little minor setback with it, but um, it's cool. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, we did a good job making sure I'm 100 percent. You know, the coaches and the trainers, you know, they they trust me, trust my word. And, you know, they didn't want to, like, throw me in there. I'm not ready. You feel me? So I think we did a good job. Just, just waiting until I'm ready to play to uh, put me out there. Gotcha. And then now that now that you're healthy and, you know, Cam McCormick's healthy, everyone, you know, everyone in the tight end room is healthy, you know, knock on wood. Um, how do you think all your guys strengths can kind of play off each other? Uh, I I think we'll do really good. You know, we all have certain strengths that we can do. And I feel like, you know, we can play off of each other. Like we kind of we kind of complement each other in a way. So uh, I think we can, you know, use everybody in the room a different way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be helpful for this offense. We'll be good. We'll go back to Susan. Susan, go ahead. Um, Elijah, uh, you're in your third year already. Uh, how fast does it seem to have gone for you? Um, and uh, and I have a couple more quick ones. Oh uh, shoot, it's it's flown by. I I tell the younger guys all the time, like you know, take advantage of it because you know it's gonna be like that. You're gonna be in year three already. But uh, yeah, it's flown by. It's it's, it's been great though. Do, do you, I was wondering, I, I know you were close with Will Mallory, uh, you know, do you stay in touch with Will still, get any advice from him, just kind of go back and forth? What's your relationship? Yeah, of course, that's my guy, you know, I, I'm always, you know, picking at his brain, you know, because he's at the next level now. So I just, I, I kind of want to know, like, how it's like, and, you know, what I should do as far as, you know, being a professional, or, you know, just, just anything off the field, like, you know, I, I know he's got me with any advice I need. <laughs> Does he have he given you anything that you could share that's kind of nice advice or, you know, some words of wisdom? <clears throat> I mean, not anything specific, but, um, you know, when I was hurt, I was talking to him. He was just saying, you know, make sure 100 percent before you get back out there, you know, because you, you don't want to go back out, and, you know, re-injure anything. And then my last thing was, I, I know from previous stories we've done, I, your grandfather, and I hope he's okay. I don't I don't know. This has been a couple of years. Um, your your grandpa had a lot to do with you loving UM. Um, can you talk about him a little bit? And I hope he's okay still. I just don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's down here. Um, but yeah, uh, my grandpa's always lived down here. And, you know, he was part of the reason why I came down because, you know, growing up, he was a big Canes fan. He used to take us to a lot of the games and stuff. And I remember, you know, as a kid, like, shoot, football games are kind of long. I'll be wanting to leave. I'm like, shoot, I'm like, can we go? He's like, after this drive, all right, the drive will go by. He's like, all right, after this drive. But it's cool. But, yeah. Um, but, no, I remember before I committed, I asked him, you know, because I know he's going to tell me, like, like an honest answer. So I asked him, like, I'm thinking about coming here. Like, do you think it's a good idea? Like, I know you want me to, but like, like outside looking in, like, do you think it would be a good idea? And yeah, he talked to me about it. And uh, even now, like, he tells me like, 
that's a great decision that you made. He's like, I don't know how you made like a decision that well, you know, at the age of what, 17, 16, 17. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real glad he, uh, he influenced me and helped me come here. And, you know, he comes to all the games. So oh, that's he, awesome. He the team, yeah. Is it, does he live in Miami? Yeah, he does. He lives down here. Okay. Always listen to your grandfather. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. And we'll wrap up by going back to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey, again. I guess a uh, younger you would have liked the new rules that they had instituted, instituted this year to kind of speed up the game, you know, make things move faster. Um, that's not my actual question. Um, my actual question, though, is just about Clemson's defense. You know, what have you seen from them on film? They're obviously very talented. Yeah, you know, they, they're big up front. They, uh, they're they very talented, you know. Um so we just I feel like we got a game plan that's uh gonna do well against them. And you know, we'll we'll see how everything goes. Um so yeah, you guys had did a pretty good job, especially in the first half on Saturday, uh, at pass rushing. I know you had a sack. Um just, did you what did you notice? What was any uh anything different that you guys uh did on Saturday to kind of get to the quarterback more often? Oh, uh, we kinda game planned them. Uh we had some a few adjustments going into the second half. Um, just our, our, our call, Coach G had a few plays in mind and, you know, we kind of executed well, um, props to them for picking up really well. And yeah, we just had to, you know, pressure from different sides and, and that's what's, that's what's kind of, that's what kind of what we had in plan, um, going forward with that game. And then kind of in the same vein, uh, not that Clemson's quarterback is, Super young, but he's a, he's a first year starter, and mm -hmm. obviously you guys want to get to the quarterback all the time. But how much can you guys disrupt an offense when you're getting to a younger quarterback? Um, our focus this week is just trying to get better. Uh, we're gonna you know game plan and, and um adjust with what we see on the field. And you know this quarterback is a really good quarterback. He can use his feet, so we got a game plan around that. He can throw too. He got some. Some weapons outside um, at wide receivers and tight ends, and they got a, got a good running back that could, you know, make plays. So it's all a matter of preparation that we're going into this game and knowing what their strength is and, you know, trying to adjust. Uh, next, we'll go to Matt Shodell. Matt, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Kiko. So, um, you know, I know you haven't been around the program for that long, but. Uh, you know, Miami's had three game losing streaks in seasons 12 of the last 17 years. And uh, you got Clemson up to try and not have that happen this year. So what's sort of the mindset of the team right now to make sure that doesn't happen? All, all we're focused is trying to get better. Um, those past two games is, is gone. We're just going to erase it, put it in back uh, back pockets, and we're going to we're gonna move forward. And, you know, us leaders and... Our coach is going to keep us motivated and encourage us to, you know, uh, you know, push forward and move on. You know, you, you got to have a short memory and we got to learn, you know, you use those games to learn and prepare for the next game. And that's kind of mindset um, in our locker room and in a facility. We're just, we're just, we're motivated to get back on that field and, you know, give it our best. Next, we'll go to Susan Miller Degnan. Susan, go ahead. Pico, uh, Clemson, you know, rushing, uh, what are the challenges for your uh, rushing defense? I know last week, uh, the, uh, I guess Omario, or Marion Hampton had mm -hmm. almost 200 yards rushing. Um, how can you guys improve in that? And, you know, tell me a little about Clemson's, their running. I mean, after the UNC game, you know, we get back here, we watch the film, and we just didn't execute on, on, on our part. And... That's something we got to get better at, and we're going to learn, and we're going to play disciplined football. And, you know, same as Clemson, we're going to treat it as uh, we're going to th – this this team got a really good running game going on, and they they thrive over the running game, and we're just going to, you know, adjust and see where we could do better and, you know, fit, fit, our, fit our gaps. So, yeah. And, and my follow is just on the other side of the ball for you guys. Um, you know, Elijah Arroyo is back and uh, we, he hasn't played a lot in the last year, but what, obviously, but what, what can he bring to this team and um, how is he to cover for, for defense? I mean, whenever he comes back, um, I mean, 
he's 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 recovering pretty fast and uh i mean he brings a lot to the table um he's a big physical guy he could run route and could block so he's a, he, he could be the really really uh big factor in our offense so so yeah thank you yep thank you next we'll go to marcus benjamin marcus go ahead Hey, Kiko, just wanted to ask about causing turnovers. Um, that's something that uh, didn't happen in the last game and I guess, you know, can be improved uh, yeah. as far as causing turnovers. And uh, defensive coordinator Lance Gidry said that he wished that you would have slapped the ball out on your sack. So yeah. has there been an emphasis on getting turnovers this week? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, after watching the film, we had a couple of opportunities where we could, you know, make some something happen. And we just didn't do it. And I guess um, for this week, we're emphasizing, you know, get it to the ball, play, do your job. And, you know, and if you get the opportunity and the, the opportunity uh, presents, you, you know, you got to take advantage of it. And so, yeah, we're just moving forward, um, correcting our mistakes from last week and, yeah, make sure that it don't happen again. And uh, we'll wrap up by going back to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey again. So I think it's been a few weeks since uh, we asked about your brother. Um, but looking at like you know his uh, his publicly available player grades and stuff, uh, seems like he's really improved the last couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. have, how have you seen that on the practice field? And then just you know with talking to him, has he seemed more comfortable the last couple of weeks? Like he hasn't been called for a penalty since I think week two. Right. His grades are a lot better, you know, from what we can see. Like mm -hmm. you know, how has he adjusted? You know, and grown over the course of the year. Yeah, I feel like he has grown a lot um, in the past few weeks. You know, he's been very steady. Um, I feel like he's more, more comfortable now. Um, and it's it's all part of, you know, our preparation, you know, our D-line, um, getting at them and getting them better, you know, iron sharpens iron. And that's what we do here at Miami. Um, we practice, we practice hard. And when the game comes, you know, opportunity presents, it's either you're going to bite or not. So I feel like he's been in a good position now. Um, he's comfortable, you know, playing his position at, at this level as a freshman. So, yeah, he has grown a lot. So, yeah.